Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 637. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today is December 18th, 2020. All right, welcome to another show. Before we get started, we humbly ask that as a Christmas present to the host here on Anglican Scripted, you like the program. Just go to Facebook, go to YouTube, click the little thumbs up, get my thumb on camera here, and that helps the algorithms know that we're something that people should search for and like, and that Facebook and YouTube should promote. If you had not subscribed to the show, now is a great chance to subscribe. You go to the YouTube channel and you click that little red rectangle and you will see a bell pop up. I'm told by YouTube that if you click the bell, you get instant notifications. Some viewers out there have trouble with that. Most of you get instant notifications. It's the way technology works. Sorry about that. The show does not end when I click the stop button here with George and I. I need you guys to go to the comment section where every week hundreds of people go in there, they read the comments, and many of you respond to the comments and add your own comments on the show. We really appreciate that. We read all the comments, and uh, it really lets us know when we're off base. doesn't happen often. And we're right when we're right on target. And uh, I think last week and the week before and the week before, and for the last 367 episodes, we've been right on target. George, how's it going? Kevin, I am living in the midst of a winter meltdown. The meltdown is mine. I am so cold. My lips are chapping and splitting. Uh, most life around here in Florida is reptilian. Uh, at, at the crocodile, the alligators are coming out of the swamps and they're going into the gated communities and knocking on doors, asking to be taken inside. Please. You know, it, it's it, it's it, it's only in the '60s right now, and I have my heavy woolen suit on and long underwear, and uh -huh. oh, the cold! Now it, we're at the very tip of this winter storm that's gone all the way up into New England, dumping uh, feet of uh, several feet of snow in some places in New York and Pennsylvania. But we have the tip in the temperature down here. So how are you in sunny South Florida? I want to move to South yeah, Florida well, one day if it doesn't change. We're north of Naples, uh, up in, in Cape Coral, and uh, we're yeah, the, the, we're signing up at this RV resort. And we got an email from the RV resort. Now, mind you, down here, it's seventy-three degrees. Up there, it's a little colder. You're three hours north of us. And the email I got from the RV resort was due to inclement weather. Friday, December 18th, happy hour will be canceled. <laughs> That's cold. When you can't have a happy hour on a Friday, it's 73 degrees. That's, that's just astonishing, George. It's a, it's a different mindset the, down here. Well, the golf cart batteries, it's so cold, they won't start in this cold. Um, it's just, I, I, I feel like I'm in North Dakota. We have one of our viewers lives in uh, northern uh, northern alberta or saskatchewan yeah, and sure. whenever i say it's uh it's only 40 degrees he'll say oh it's 40 below here what are you complaining about <laughs> no it, it is objective uh, or not objective it's subjective obviously our our thoughts on the cold because we have so many viewers that just got taken out by this uh, 40 inch snowstorm that hit new york connecticut uh massachusetts uh, new jersey uh pennsylvania my kids keep sending pictures of uh, all the snow they got. And uh, um, it, it's nice to see, you know, we're having regular winters again. And, you know, going to have a, a, a snowy Christmas. Maybe even here in Florida, because the, the cold front is extending down here for sure. Uh, George, let's uh, move on to some news. Um, a lot of people say, guys, all you do is record, record your shows on bad news. When are you going to talk about something good? Well, a lot of the stories we do talk about are good news because we're talking about accountability within the church. We're letting you know in a very transparent way what is happening. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's bad news. Well, when there's accountability in the church taking care of the bad news, 
that's not bad news that's a win and for centuries thousands of years the church has lacked accountability and we see it now from time to time we highlight it here in the ACNA we highlight it in other churches around the world and this week we're going to talk a little bit about Nigeria George when I started uh, writing in the church news about 25 years ago, one of the hardest things was to get negative news out of any African church. Mm -hmm. You just did not speak ill of any of your colleagues or the issues that went on. So Africans, the continent, uh, would hear Desmond Tutu say stuff about gay marriage 25 years ago, and they would be completely silent because we're not going to knock Desmond Tutu because he's one of us. And that culture of uh, cover-up of the big man can do no wrong really did plague the African church. And it plagues part of the church today. But one of the things we're seeing out of the Church of Nigeria and the Church of Uganda uh, and the Church of Kenya in recent years has been a commitment to transparency and honesty. Now, what do I mean? Well, we had a, we had a recent story in Anglican Inc. that the Church of Nigeria has suspended a bishop for a one-year period for having committed adultery with one of the wife with the wife of one of his clergy now some people would say only one year i said one year well, Why? what do you mean one year well for me that's a massive story because it within my memory um that would never have been allowed to go public I mean, somebody would have been quietly smacked down or quietly told to clean up his act, but they would always cover up, no more. And I think part of the, the cover-up, the death of the cover-up culture is the internationalization of the leadership of the African church. It's really coming of age. Mm -hmm. It's no longer parochial in the sense that the most important things happen within our borders. Now, we've reported stories in the past few months of, of a bishop, the bishop in Zanzibar, uh, having, committing adultery and even paying for the abortion of the uh, child uh, conceived in this relationship. We've written about the bishop of uh, Upper Shire in Malawi, Brighton, Malasa, who has been accused of uh, adultery with one of the wives of his clergy. Those churches, their bishops have have formed a ring around the errant bishop. Mm -hmm. And so we hear nothing negative about those bishops. While the Church of Nigeria and the Church of Uganda have kept it clean. Uganda, we had a bishop uh, who was elected a, a bishop, but it turned out he uh, submitted fraudulent identity documents making himself older than he actually was. Therefore, he was not canonically able to be elected bishop. And we had his partisans uh, threaten people, uh, saying, no, uh, you know, if you testify, we'll beat you up. Well, the Church of Uganda studied this, put out all the facts, and came to its decision in an open and public way, saying, you know, this guy, he can't be bishop. He forged his certificates. This fellow uh, in, Niger in Nigeria, he was caught in adultery, and we are going to punish him, and we are going to release a letter that even Anglican Inc. is going to get a copy of that they can put on their web page for the world to see that we're not throwing stones, but we're releasing information put out by the National Church in Nigeria. For me, it's a victory of transparency. And if we've learned anything from this presidential campaign, transparency is essential. And you really know it's essential when you see it's not being not being made public when it's not existing anymore. No, I mean, uh, there was no fair uh, reporting at all in the presidential election. And we also saw for the first time a more heavy handedness of fake news. Uh, I was reading uh, Daily Mail, just going through the, um, the headlines, and I could just pick out the fake stories, just in the headlines. Yeah, yeah, well, that's not real, that's not real, that probably is real. And I, as a journalist, I'm not reading half as much as I used to because so many of these are fake or they're based on anonymous sources or uh, there's just no real makeup to the news anymore. When I was younger, every news story had two sides. 
my dad would go out in the morning, pick up his uh, paper that arrived at 6.30 on the front doorstep from the Madison Journal, whatever it was at the time, and uh, he would read it you know, cover to cover. He would get his uh, second paper at 4.30 p.m., read it cover to cover, and back then, every story had two, every story had two sides, George. Now, every story doesn't. There, no matter what side of the, the spectrum of politics you're on, nobody is putting out two sides of a story. And until we return to that, all news is biased and all news is borderline fake. Uh-oh, they're on to us. <laughs> oh, my. If that's the FBI, you don't know me. So, well, let's just give us examples of why this is so vitally important. Um, the ACNA went through a scandal uh, in the Diocese of uh, the Great Lakes, mm. where the bishop was suspended. Then he was kicked. He was asked to retire. He was set, he was mm. sent down. Mm -hmm. He was defrocked for moral prob moral failings. It wasn't adultery in this case. It was uh, pornography. The ACNA was open about this. I mean, we we learned. We learn things two ways. We learn things officially and unofficially. People will call and contact us and say, did you hear? For instance, we had recently, there was a new Eastern Newfoundland, which is St. John's, which is the big city. The bishop there committed suicide. And the, all the Canadian church reported officially was that uh, the bishop died suddenly. And we had people contacting us, telephoning us, emailing us, saying, did you hear this bishop committed suicide? He was suffering from depression, and he took his own life. The Canadian Church to this day will not respond to a question, did he commit suicide? Whereas the, and it was just, he's here one day, gone the next. Whereas the ACNA, the Church of Nigeria, the Church of Uganda, when they have these things happen, to frail fallen human beings, they'll tell the truth. And they'll even let us know it, that this is happening. And this is so valuable to, in our day and age, as you say, Kevin, I don't trust half of what I read. Mm. I don't trust what people in the media world tell me anymore, because I know enough about my own specific field to know that most of what I read is untrue. So when we have stories about politics or economics, how much of that is untrue? Yeah. Is basic is basically everything true, except the stuff I happen to know something about, um, or is it equally all flawed and spun and made to fit an agenda that belongs to somebody else rather than the truth? So when it comes to being honest and forthright, and we see this being lived out to the detriment of the church, then that's a plus. That's a good day. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, the church will grow from this. And it's interesting, you know, we're here the the time of Advent and the, and the time of Christmas. Uh, to me, uh, the birth of Christ was God's transparency. You know, mm -hmm. this is it. This is incarnation. Uh, this is God incarnate. This is as real as it gets. And so I really enjoy when we see... The church being transparent and i enjoy you know even though some of the stories are hard to, to to muster and you see human failing when you see the church uh hold itself accountable that's a win and yeah when you guys complain we don't do a lot of good news you sometimes have to look past what you're hearing and see that the church is holding itself accountable in the bad old days which is still a which are still active in india and in Tanzania and other places. And Church of England. Uh, Church of England. Um, the bad old days, for example, Valentino Mokiwa was the bishop of Dar es Salaam. He was the primate of Tanzania. And he always had a reputation that he was dirty, uh, financially unclean and morally unclean. And people who would serve in that church, missionaries and Africans whom we came to know and who would trust us would tell us these stories. Well, I couldn't run them because I couldn't confirm them. Um, how do you confirm that the archbishop is having an affair with one of his clergy's wives without actually talking to the clergy wife or whatever? Mm -hmm. Well, 
it eventually all came out and Valentina was kicked out of the ministry and it, he was kicked out because he fell afoul of the ruling clique and he wasn't sharing enough for the wealth it wasn't that they discovered that he was stealing but that he was stealing so much and not sharing it with the other bishops that they finally got sick of him well, where I'm going with this is that when I ran these stories I had half a dozen American clergy contact me saying oh why are you telling these terrible lies about Mokiwa he is a wonderful man we send him money for these projects and I would say well what did you do and well we bought him this bus and then I would say well you know four or five other churches also bought him the same bus so what happens is you get a picture of here's the bus the twenty thousand dollars you gave us bought this bus and well what happens when you get five people give you twenty thousand bucks you can buy a twenty thousand dollar bus and then you pocket eighty thousand that's what king was doing there's an unfortunate incident uh, unfortunate tend in some older members of the ACNA to think that uh, that African bishops are so unlike their Episcopal Church of the USA counterparts that they can't be corrupt. They can't be. I found this. People. I found this more in the mission or the EMEA than I did in the ACNA. But you know, I well, I do I I agree that there's some people who look at Africa, uh, especially Congo or. Um, um, uh, other places on the East Coast, and say, you know, their 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 reputation is beyond uh, reproach. They're, they're the best of the best, and they came here to save us. They came back to America with the gospel we gave them two hundred years ago, and they're being uh, um, holy and righteous and bringing the gospel back to us. Thank God for them. And I'm like, yeah, but. Uh, you're not really paying attention to the individuals. You, you're more excited that they're taking on the Episcopal Church or they're taking on the Church of England or they're standing up uh, publicly to what they see, but uh, there's still so much corruption based uh, largely on the culture, maybe not the church, but the culture they grow up with it um, and their understanding of uh, how to budget and run economics that's different than ours here in America that you need to look a little further rwanda is not perfect and above reproach congo is not and i think the EMEA fell into that yeah well it's easy to fall into that kevin uh you remember uh, when we were in dar es salaam in tanzania and the archbishop of canterbury was arriving at the airport and you and i took a cab to the airport and they had all these security guards with machine guns and uh in, uh, what are they called metal detectors and this area was closed to the press well I pulled out a roll of bills and we bribed our way in and you know you could have had a yeah and they didn't check your equipment no. you know <laughs> I had a tripod that looked like a machine gun <laughs> it was like no but come on yeah it's going over here <laughs> and, and you know the equivalent of 10 US dollars put us in the VIP lounge uh, where the president, uh, where the Archbishop uh, where Rowan Williams was yeah. greeting, yeah. Uh, because money talked. You know, you, you walk up to the, uh, that was just, just how Tanzania works. And that culture is in the church as well there, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, George, we're coming up on the holidays. Uh, do you want to take a break for Christmas week from Unscripted? Well, whenever we say that then massive things happen i yeah news happens a lot you know every time that uh alan would go on vacation legal news would break I, i'm hoping nothing does if we if we tape monday or tuesday we tape if not uh, uh please forgive us as we uh take the holidays off to uh rest recuperate spend time with our families we're actually zooming this year with our family uh we're not uh driving up to pittsburgh to spend time with the kids because uh they in COVID times don't want to infect us mom and dad and we don't want to drive across the country and uh, chance an infection either so uh i understand from emails i'm getting and facebook posts that a lot of people are having a zoom christian uh, christmas george what are your plans well i'm working on christmas uh you're working on christmas that's good we've had <laughs> well the choirs told me that they're not comfortable singing and uh -huh. in, in the enclosed church sure. so we're doing two online services one christmas eve one christmas day 
and then two outdoor services, one Christmas Eve, one Christmas Day without music. So it, it'll be uh, it'll be nice to sing Silent Night outdoors, holding candles in sure. the dark. It'll be fun. Yeah. But, you know, most Christmases I'd get for the entire cycle up to three, four hundred people. And I'm hoping to get 75 this year. And it's all due to COVID. Yeah. The fear. The COVID Christmas. <sighs> well, I ask our viewers to please enjoy this time of year, the transparency of God. And uh, you know, I do wish you, George, a Merry Christmas, although I'm probably going to see you in a week or two. I got to go pick up my mail. Have you got any packages from me? <laughs> probably. Just one. Just, Just one. One, for Kev, one, for, one for Jim. That's good, good. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger. And you've been watching episode 637 of Anglican Unscripted.